Hello everybody, welcome back to another video from Exotic Astrology. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe to it. And after watching this video, if you have any questions and queries, then please let me know in the comment section. And before beginning, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Okay, today we will discuss one example regarding house lords and tenants okay it is very important to discuss with examples otherwise we do not understand how the things function okay therefore we will go stepwise okay so when you see this chart what do you understand the first thing to know is which ascendant the person is yes how do you know which ascendant he is well, it's very simple. Just look at this house. Do you see the pointer? Yes, this square that you see is the ascendant. This square. This will always be the ascendant. The Lagna, the first house. Do not see these numbers here. Forget about the numbers. Just think of this square. Okay. This square or rectangle, what you call, whatever you want to call, is the Lagna or the ascendant or the rising sign. When sun is moving, whatever sign is rising in the east, whichever zodiac rises in the east, this is the sign. And which is the sign placed here? It's number 8. Which is number 8? Number 8 is Scorpio. If you have not watched on the zodiacs earlier, then please go back to the playlist and watch. So now, how do we interpret this chart? Okay. First of all, you have to check where the ascendant lord and the sun and moon are sitting okay if any planet sits in the ascendant itself then that planet becomes the most important planet in somebody's horoscope that is something which the person cannot do away with in this life he must fulfill the karma related to that planet okay so here in the ascendant we do not have any planet so that condition is ruled out okay now we have to see where the lord of the ascendant is going as i said in the earlier videos that every house has a ruler so number eight is the scorpio sign which is ruled by mars okay so where is mars sitting mars is sitting here okay which is this house one two three four five six seven so mars is sitting in the seventh house in the sign of two taurus this is not second house this is seventh house <clears throat> only the sign number is two okay this house will always be the seventh house this will always be the fourth this will always be the tenth house okay so now mars is the lord of the ascendant it is sitting in the seventh house so what does this mean ascendant is the whole life the body the person himself okay so this simply means that one of the prominent goals of this person in this life will be focusing on the opposite sex because seventh house is the house of the opposite sex okay of course this is the chart of a male one of my very good friends from the days of my engineering since seven years 2010 and i know him very well in this regard <laughs> Seventh house is not only opposite sex. Seventh house is also public platform. It is showing yourself to, to the public. Okay. So he is a very uh, showy person. He likes to do a lot of show off and he likes to boast about himself. Okay. Because the Lord of the Ascendant, the planet which is controlling his first house, which is his whole life. The summary of all the houses is this house. First, first house, the body where where you are actually so he he this is his house and he has gone to the seventh house to the house of other people public platform this can also mean marriage and spouse okay and opposite sex as i said and in general seventh house also means showing yourself to to the public showing yourself to the people so this person will love to show himself will love to show off as i said okay now you have to see where is moon placed okay where is his mind? These are his actions which he will be doing physically, externally, okay? Now, moon is placed in the sign of Virgo in the 11th house. Count like this. 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 okay number six is the sign number again I am repeating these numbers which you are seeing are not houses they are the zodiac sign numbers so this is the 11th house where moon is sitting and it is sitting in the sign of Virgo okay then what is the what what is this planet this is Venus Venus and moon are sitting together okay now moon is sitting in the sign of Virgo which means the mother of this native is a very picky person she's a very 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 choosy person okay and she's very particular about things she is very much nitpicky about details which she is definitely as he says and this gene will also come to him and because of this he also has this nature okay now he has moon and venus conjunct together okay now this is called a conjunction as we have not discussed yet we will discuss about conjunctions later conjunction basically means when two planets sit together they try to influence each other okay now we will discuss about moon venus conjunction later but in a layman's term this shows too much dependency on the opposite sex okay because moon is the watery planet venus is also another watery planet okay so this means that uh, the person will have too much dependency of water what is water water is the feminine touch okay this person will have difficulty going for days and months and weeks together without messaging a female or without talking to some female okay he will have this neediness this desperation okay because the two planets which are showing water okay they are together in the chart okay the two watery planets okay so basically in his wife which is venus he searches for a mother okay <laughs> and also this can lead to too much neediness too much desperation at times and if the person does not find that the current partner with whom he is is not able to satisfy his needs emotionally physically or if he's not happy with her basically then this person will have a tendency to move to somebody else okay why am i saying this because moon is a very fast moving planet so moon will have moon has a tendency to go from one place to the other so when venus sits with moon it also feels as if i also need to go from one place to another because moon travels the entire zodiac in 27 days whereas saturn needs 27 years to traverse the entire zodiac and moon also is a receptive planet okay it takes the light of the sun and gives us so when it sits with venus what happens is this person the venus the venusian energy which is love romance that gets dried up very soon okay and the charm in the relationship gets over immediately after some time and the beginning is very romantic very passionate very energetic okay and there's too much love and emotion in the beginning days with a new person but then eventually gradually the the, uh, the love can fade away okay now why i'm saying this is because this is in the sign of virgo which is the debilitation sign of venus so which clearly indicates me that uh, this person has had difficulty having a balance in his life because venus represents balance okay so he's likely to meet women also who are very much unbalanced in life okay who can also be very much needy or very desperate for his company and by this he may feel choked up within the relationship okay this is these are typical traits of venus in virgo and as if this was less this is also conjunct moon okay so now let us see the different areas for example the planet which is ruling the seventh house is venus because number two is taurus which is ruled by venus and venus is sitting in the 11th house again okay here yeah, venus has a dou double role venus is not only the natural significator of spouse it is also the planet which is ruling the seventh house of marriage okay so the seventh lord is in the 11th house okay now what does this mean is that 
he will meet see now venus in the 11th house has a specific meaning it means 11th house is the house of friends okay so he will have a lot of female friends okay and it is with moon so this will be much more okay because moon is also female planet so he will have too many female friends okay and apart from this as a ruler of the 7th house it is placed in the 11th house that means whenever he is in some friend circle okay or he is talking with somebody uh, within his friend circle it, it might happen that he goes into a relationship with the person eventually of course that happens these days uh, most of the times but here specifically he will be having uh, relationships with people who, are, who with whom he meets as a friend okay in a in a large group of friends in a large group of uh, association if venus would be sitting in the 10th house okay this would mean that he would meet somebody when he was in his workplace okay but this is not the case here or if venus would be in the ninth house it would here it would mean that he would meet many people women when he would go for uh, some religious journey or when he would go to some temple or some church etc but here 11th house in general represents friends okay so maybe some friend might introduce him to his spouse etc okay so this is how you have to study the lord of the marriage is gone into the 11th house of friendships okay and now where is his son? Son is the the father. Son is sitting in the 10th house. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In the sign of Leo. Number 5 is Leo. So, son is in its own sign. Okay. And son is in 15 degrees in Leo. And son is very powerful here. It is with Jupiter. And it is with Mercury. Okay. So, Jupiter, sun, people. There are pros and cons. Okay. Before going to this, I would say about Moon, Venus. So I said about the negatives of moon and Venus conjunction, but the positives are also to be said. These people are very much sweet. They, they can talk very sweetly, very lovingly in a way that they can charm your heart. <laughs> so this makes them, uh, very, because of this, they can get the company of the opposite sex very easily, effortlessly. Okay. And here the sun is sitting in its own sign in its own house because leo is ruled by sun and sun is sitting in the 10th house itself okay so it is very good for career and it is with jupiter and mercury and mercury is almost a friend to sun it is quite neutral at some times it is considered to be a friend also and it jupiter is definitely a very good friend of the sun okay so this <coughs> means that there will be a lot of goodness in the person okay he will be quite fixed with his ideals and with his goals that he wants to achieve in this life he will be very focused towards working in areas of his career okay and this happens because fiery planet like sun is in the 10th house okay so here we see that jupiter is also in the 10th house mercury is also in the 10th house and sun is also in the 10th house so his there are three planets which are guaranteeing him name fame status okay because 10th house is the house of status name and fame so this also means that he will rise very high in life okay <clears throat> and the planets which will give him name and fame are planets like jupiter sun and mercury what is what is sun sun is authorities government figures leaders okay he can become a great leader in an organization jupiter is the advisor mercury jupiter both represent counseling advising okay so this person can do very good in areas of counseling giving advice okay etc they can do great in areas of being a teacher also although this person has done mba and he's going to join in a marketing company so that is also seen by mercury in the 10th house okay and mercury in the 10th makes the person very versatile he will have a lot of contacts he will have a lot of people who he knows okay and his workplace will be very diverse that will involve a lot of communication traveling etc and frequent changes of jobs also okay and sun will give him a uh, very high status name fame leadership position authority position etc and jupiter in the 10th is also fabulous because jupiter expands the house wherever it sits 
so it will expand his career his name his fame because it is also with a friend okay now apart from this we have Rahu in the second house and Ketu in the eighth house so Rahu in the second house simply means the person has obsession towards money okay the person is very much obsessed towards becoming rich rich and rich all the time and Ketu in the eighth house signifies that his relationship with the in-laws can suffer okay because eighth house is second from the seventh house okay this is the seventh house second from this is the eighth house okay second from the house of your spouse second house is family so you can have a, so this person might have a difficult time with his uh, with his in-laws with his father-in-law with his mother-in-law okay or with the family of his spouse in general okay and also it means that the person has been into the eighth house activities which uh, in his past life which uh, he's not anymore interested in this life <laughs> now saturn is in the third house okay this shows that whenever a malefic is in the third house it is considered very good but the irony is it is considered good by saying that he it gives a lot of strength to the person well how i would interpret this is you will need to show strength you will need to show courage okay otherwise this is not going to happen okay so here saturn is in the third house so it is likely that in his life he will not get things uh, without having struggle okay without having delays there will be delays in his work in in his actions okay and his relationship with the father can be a bit uh, hazy because saturn from the third house is aspecting the ninth house okay we will discuss about aspects later but as of now i am just saying saturn will aspect this house will try to influence this house and saturn's aspect on the ninth house of father is not considered good and saturn with its third aspect is aspecting one two three the fifth house okay so the fifth house is having the aspect of saturn so which means he can have a few few breaks in relationships in love and romance okay not marriage in before marriage during his love romance etc and he can also have delays in having children because fifth house is also the house of children okay and mars is in the seventh house okay the lagnesh the lagna lord the lord of the ascendant itself is in the seventh house okay so Thus, we can conclude that uh, this person has some challenging karma in orientation to relationships because there's a fiery planet in the 7th house which is not considered good. And Venus is debilitated in the sign of Virgo and it is also with its arch rival moon. Okay, On the positive side, this person will have a very good status, name, fame, career. Okay, and this person will reach to great heights because of these three planets in this house okay all three are favorable for the 10th house and apart from this i do not see much inclination towards religion or spirituality in this chart because of the fact that the ninth house is empty there are no planets here and uh, there are no planets in the sign of sagittarius also nor are there any other combinations of moon which is the ninth lord with any prominent planet of course venus is the seventh lord uh, but when i say prominent planet it should mean moon connected with jupiter or the lagna lord himself okay but uh, it is unfortunately not so the case of course the dispositor of moon is sitting with jupiter but that is because dispositor of moon means mercury where moon is sitting is the dispositor of moon is with jupiter but uh, i don't consider that as a very good uh, very great indication okay so that means uh, even if i try to give impart some spiritual knowledge to this person it is uh, highly unlikely that this person will try to follow it so i refrain from doing so <laughs> after knowing the horoscope okay so to summarize this person he's a very flashy person very show very show off because jupiter sun both are very big planets okay he has big big planets in the 10th house which means he likes to show about show off and he likes to 
tell about himself okay and the lord of the ascendant is itself in the seventh house of other people and so many female associations in the eleventh house of friends okay so at times his wife can have this insecurity that oh this person is always staying with his female friends <laughs> if she is not stable herself okay and uh, if this person if somebody would come with this chart to me for issues regarding marriage then i would say that please uh, be careful if you are planning to marry this person because he has this moon and venus conjunction because of which he might uh, end up doing extra marital affairs because if he doesn't like you then he will switch off to somebody else okay so that's it from my side if you have any questions queries and comments then please let me know okay so we discussed today lord of the first house is sitting in the seventh house lord of the second house which is jupiter is sitting in the 10th house lord of the third house saturn is sitting in the third house fourth lord is also saturn sitting in the third fifth lord is jupiter sitting in the 10th house sixth lord is mars sitting in the seventh house okay so there is likelihood of some disputes in his marital life etc because of the placement of the sixth lord okay although it is also the lord of the ascendant but it is also ruling the sixth house okay so some disputes and some quarrels some major fights etc in the seventh house of marriage and not very great relationship with his in-laws okay and ninth house is also empty here ruled by moon sitting in the 11th house and 10th house is fabulous here mind-blowing three beautiful planets sitting in the 10th house and two watery planets sitting in the 11th house giving him a lot of female associations and 12th house is empty okay so that's it from my side bye bye see you